Professor Guido Cozzi. He teaches macroeconomics at the University of St. Galen in Switzerland. Welcome back to the program, Professor. Now, the Chinese, economy, Chinese economic growth slowed in the third quarter to below 5%. And at the time, authorities said that they had the tools to kind of prop up the world's second largest economy. But how do these latest numbers affect their um, approach? Yes, certainly it may question several tools because it is clearly um, um, a supply shock, what we call it in economics, uh, macroeconomics uh, supply uh, shocks. So uh, on the production side, uh, there are problems. The problems are uh, that inputs are more expensive, uh, power, uh, um, energy uh, is, is, is very expensive at the moment. It increased massively. Also, materials uh, and other uh, important uh, inputs are getting scarcer, also due to the trade restrictions related to COVID restrictions. Uh, so, uh, faced with, with uh, um, a, a supply shock of this kind, uh, it would be a mistake to activate uh, uh, aggregate demand. So to try to stimulate demand, because you know, faced with, uh, um, uh, I wouldn't say a reduction of, of, of production, but something similar, less uh, a lower increase of production compared to what was expected, um, uh, governments can be tempted to increase aggregate demand by supporting, for example, uh, um, public spending. But that would increase demand further. And since in economics, we know that when demand increases and supply uh, drops, prices go up. OK, so um, at the moment, there is also a tension, uh, a distributive tension uh, uh, that may be related to the to the common prosperity um, uh, slogan by Xi Jinping, because when uh, um, uh, production prices go up, uh, if firms decide not to translate that into uh, consumption prices, that will reduce profit for the firms. But as soon as they decide to translate it into higher consumption prices, as they are uh, starting to do now, say, see for example, uh, food price, then uh, it, it, the burden gets translated to the workers. And the workers see their uh, real incomes um, drop, and they will ask for more wages. So social tension will uh, start. And if higher wages um, uh, feed into a higher input prices, uh, so an additional source of, of, of into price increase, then this may, may lead to higher price and a wage, spi a wage price spiral that we have seen in the stagflation uh, in, in, in the 70s, for example, and that we are fearing now in the US and in Europe uh, which are, uh, you know, in, in a very similar condition as China. So uh, uh, China um, should be sensitive to the redistributive consequences. So Shell um, and, and entrepreneurs uh, face reduced profits or uh, uh, workers uh, face uh, uh, reduced real wages. Um, uh, so uh, in, the, in the common prosperity slogan that maybe now it's echoing in the rooms of the Communist Party Committee, which is uh, Communist Party Congress, which is uh, which is uh, taking place these days, um, may lead to interesting solutions. I think they have to be creative. If they don't want to have a, a wage price spiral setting, they must decide who has to pay um, the, this uh, uh, these extra costs or how to share um, uh, among the different social classes. All right, a lot to think about for Chinese policymakers. Professor Guido Cozzi from the University of St. Galen in Switzerland, thank you for your analysis.